So about two weeks ago, I tested Noctua's new NFA 12 by 25 120 millimeter fan when it came to case airflow. And the biggest takeaway from that video was that at the same RPM as the stock NZXT fans in the case that we tested, the new NFA 12s performed about the same thermally, but were significantly quieter. So today we're going to be testing them when it comes to radiator performance and whether you should go with these or if you should stick with traditional static pressure options. So we're going to be testing these against four other fans and just with our initial test, we're going to be testing them against the stock option. So the stock fans on our 240 millimeter uh, AIO, uh, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Uh, and that way we can evaluate uh, whether upgrading those uh, fans uh, really is worth it, or if you should just leave those stock fans on. As a bit of a refresh, the main difference with the Noctua NFA 12 by 25 against the other fans that we're looking at today is the tip clearance between the fan blades and the frame. This allows for more efficient airflow, less air leaking and turbulence. And I've spoken about this in depth in a couple previous videos, but Noctua were able to do this by developing their own liquid crystal polymer called Sterox. This is a high tensile strength polymer which heavily resists fan blade expansion over time due to centrifugal forces. The other fans that we're taking a look at today though have a fairly generous tip clearance in the event of any fan blade creep or vibration, and it'll be very interesting to see whether Noctua's Sterox material has really made any difference. And then we have the three popular static pressure options that we're also taking a look at. First up are the EK Varda Evo 120s, which I've personally been using in the bottom of my main NKS M1 build to exhaust heat out of the bottom. And my experience with these has been excellent in terms of performance, but quality control and lifespan hasn't been so great. Next are Noctua's own NFF12 industrial PPC fans, which are renowned for their excellent static pressure performance. And it'll be very interesting to see also here how these perform against Noctua's own and newer NFA 12x25s. The cool thing about these fans is that they're rated for IP52 watt protection and are designed for industrial applications. Lastly, we have the Corsair SP120, another popular static pressure option which I've had success with in the past, and these come packed with some of Corsair's liquid AIOs. Unfortunately, the model I have here tops out at just 1350 RPM, so testing here for this fan was a little bit limited. Now, the 240 millimeter liquid all-in-one cooler that we're using is NZXT's Kraken X52. It's got an Azatec Gen 5 pump with a speed of up to 2800 RPM, a copper cold plate, the iconic infinity mirror that we all love, and the Air P120 fans that spin up to 2000 RPM. Before we get into the results in just a minute, let's quickly talk about the testing. We're stepping up the CPU to a higher TDP this time around, going with the 8-core 2700X, as this way we can generate a lot more heat and hopefully see a larger gap between the different configurations. We're also going to be testing in the Fractal Design Meshify C, which provides no issues with 240mm radiator compatibility, and best of all, it provides ample ventilation for those fans at the front to pull in some air. It does come with two case fans as well, which we will be moving to the rear of the case, and they'll be locked to 1250 RPM for all testing. We're also controlling for the pump speed on the AIO as well, as that can have a significant impact when it comes to heat dissipation on the fin stack, so we're locking that to 2000 RPM for all tests. So enough of the talking and let's have a look at the results and let's start off with thermal results, looking at CPU thermals in Prime 95. Again, as I said at the start of the video, Thermals are not really the impressive part when it comes to fan comparisons here, it's rather the noise levels and acoustic testing, so please stick around for that in just a couple minutes. Let's start by looking at how all five fans performed at a measly 500 RPM. Here the Corsair SP120, NZXT Air P120, and Noctua NFA12 performed pretty closely with the CPU sitting at around 75 degrees C, but the standouts here were the NFF12 fans proving to be the most effective at this range, and the EK Vardas proving to be the least effective with the CPU surpassing 80 degrees C. But I get it, 500 RPM is not really a reasonable fan speed to be running at full load, so let's speed things up a little. At 1000 RPM, the margins do start to close though, with the EK Vardas now tying the Corsair SP120 at 65.3 degrees C, and the Noctua NFA 12x25, the main fan that we've got our eyes on today, giving the best result at 63.4 degrees C. At 1500 RPM, the margin between the best and worst performing fans close yet again, but placing is exactly the same. The NFA12 cooled the Ryzen 2700X to 60.2 degrees C, the NFF12 at 60.8, 
and ZXT Air P120 at 61, and both the Corsair SP120 and EK Vada at 62. Keep in mind that the Corsair SP120 does top out at 1350 RPM here also, so it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison. Now, warp speed ahead at 2000 RPM, we see the same order with the NFA12 out in front at 58.7 degrees C, and the EK Vardas giving the warmest result, but barely at 59.9. Again though, the real beauty is when we start comparing noise levels. So a quick word on the testing here, we're using an SPL meter 30 centimeters away from the center of the side panel of the case, which is the Meshify C. All panels on the case are on, and for this test, I decided to disable the case fans as I didn't want those interfering with the results. Okay, so let's again start by comparing the fans at 500 RPM, and this time that's going to be at the top of the chart, seeing as it gives the best result. Here, all fans were pretty quiet, but the NFA12s were able to give us the best result at 33.6 dBA. The results really start getting interesting though when we start increasing that fan speed, with the NFF12 increasing to 37.1 dBA, the NZXT Air P120 increasing to 36.8, the SP120 at 36, EK Vardas at 35.6, and the Noctua NFA12 at a barely audible 34 dBA. So whereas the other fans have an audible difference when increasing from 500 to 1000 RPM, the NFA12 by 25 does not, and still sounds like it's idling. For reference, the NFA12 is quieter at 1000 RPM than the Corsair SP120 was at just 500. And the trend continues at 1500 RPM, with the NFA12s significantly quieter than the Corsair SP120s, even when those were spinning at a slower 1350. Here the EK Vardas were a little noisier at 1500 RPM, but the NFF12 and NZXT Air P120 were significantly louder at around 45 dBA, and for reference it took the NFA12 at 2000 RPM to match these noise levels. At that speed, both the NFF12 and stock radiator fans, the NZXT Air P120s, sounded like absolute jet engines at above 50 dBA, whereas the NFA12 was a lot more tolerable. Here's a quick sound test of the fans at 1500 RPM to give you guys an idea. And finally, let's see what difference that reduced noise actually has on thermals, as seeing as the NFA12s run significantly quieter, you can in turn run them faster than the other fans, which results in improved thermals. Here's an example when normalizing CPU thermals for around 34 dBA, which is an almost silent system. With the EK Vardas, the 2700X hits 80.2 degrees C, then there's a significant drop of around 5 degrees C for the rest of the three fans, but it's the NFA12 fans that can maintain that noise level and spin twice as fast at the same time, and that is pure magic. Here we're seeing over a 15 degree improvement over the EK Vardas, and around a 10 to 12 degree improvement over the rest, and that is truly a significant difference. So who is this fan for? Well, I think you can tell by now that it's quite a bit overkill for those who don't care a lot about system noise, or might not be doing a lot of intensive workloads. For example, gamers most likely won't notice a difference here especially if they're wearing headphones. Looking strictly at thermals, all fans pretty much had the same performance potential once we got into realistic fan speeds, so if you only care about thermals, then these fans probably aren't worth it for you. These fans are for those who want a powerful and quiet system, so they want the best of both worlds. For example, those who are building a powerful and silent workstation that's gonna be on their desk right next to them. The last thing you want there is, you know, when you're crunching numbers or you know, rendering out a scene throughout the day, uh, the last thing you want to hear is those radiator fans just going all day. I think we would all rather a silent system in that scenario. And streamers could benefit from the quietest system possible as well, so it doesn't interfere with their stream. And, you know, obviously for gaming, for six to eight hours a day, a silent system is definitely helpful. So if you are going to be buying these fans, I would recommend starting that fan curve at 1000 RPM. There really isn't much point going below that because the noise level difference between zero RPM and 1000 RPM, you really can't tell the difference. At 1000 RPM, these fans sound like other fans. 
uh, you know, at 500 RPM or, you know, even off, you really can't tell the difference. That way you're able to maintain the same noise levels as other fans would be at idle, but you're able to improve performance significantly and have an overall quieter system. As always guys, I'd love to hear what you think of the new NFA 12x25 and what you think when it comes to radiator performance. Uh, I think the case performance, you know, uh, the use case of this as a case fan is there, but you know, I probably wouldn't go in a hurry to swap these out for case fans. It's really radiator performance and you know, heatsink performance that you're really gonna benefit uh, from running these. Um, so thanks again for watching. A lot of cool content coming up next week, so don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.